Before House of the Dragon, there was fire and blood. Will Daemon Targaryen's life follow the same course as the source material? Here's what we know about Fire and Blood's Daemon Targaryen. Spoilers ahead. Prince Daemon was knighted by his grandfather, King Jaehaerys, upon his 16th birthday, having already shown great promise as a fighter. Around the time of his father's passing, the king bestowed upon him what had been his father's blade, Dark Sister. The Valyrian steel sword was one of only two that had been passed down from Targaryen to Targaryen for at least a hundred years. Daemon lost an early tournament against his frequent adversary, Sir Criston Cole, with Dark Sister by his side. But he and the ancestral weapon got to know each other better, and Daemon would go on to use the sword to conquer lands and slay his enemies. Though she died when he was only a small child, Prince Daemon learned to ride dragons from his mother Alyssa. In his early 20s, Daemon claimed his late uncle Aemon's dragon, Caraxes, for himself. Prince Daemon's newly appointed steed was an excellent fit in terms of both physicality and temperament. Like Daemon, Caraxes was fast, strong, and intimidating, though he was also lean and nimble. Together, they conquered the Stepstones, toured the free cities of Essos, and fought in the Targaryen Civil War that pitted the Greens against the Blacks. Caraxes met his end during the Battle Above the God's Eye. Prince Daemon and Caraxes challenged Aemon Targaryen and his enormous dragon, Vagar, to fight above the vast lake at Harrenhal. Caraxes took a bite to his underbelly and lost a wing, but he managed to land a fatal blow to Vagar's throat, who fell dead upon the shores of the lake. A mortally wounded Caraxes died a little later outside the walls of Harrenhal. Had Daemon's father Balon not died suddenly from appendicitis, he would have been next in line to rule the Seven Kingdoms, and Viserys would have presumably succeeded him. But with his own named heir gone, King Jaehaerys had to make a decision. He convened a great council composed of the Seven Kingdoms' many lords to determine who should inherit the Iron Throne. The main choices were between Viserys, the eldest child of the man who had been the king's eldest surviving son, and Laenor Valerian, the only son of Rhaenys Targaryen, herself the daughter of Jaehaerys' firstborn Aemon. Daemon supported his brother's claim and raised an army to show strength, while Rhaenys and her rich and powerful husband Corlys Valerian assembled a fleet. The council had much to deliberate. Viserys was 24 years old and in his prime. He had already sired a daughter to continue the lineage in Rhaenyra. On the other hand, Laenor was only seven, though he came with his father's unparalleled fortune. In the end, the council decided to name Viserys the heir apparent. This allied Daemon to Viserys and against Corlys for a while. King Jaehaerys passed away in his old age, freeing up the throne for King Viserys I. Prince Daemon was appointed to his small council, first as Master of Coin, then as Master of Laws. The hot-tempered and restless prince was ill-suited to these positions. Before long, King Viserys gave him a job that was much more to his liking, Commander of the City Watch. In his new position, Commander Daemon was finally effective. The City Watch was a relatively new special palace force that patrolled and protected the streets of King's Landing. The prince whipped them into shape, and they became known as the Gold Cloaks. Beginning tonight, King's Landing will learn to fear the color gold. During Daemon's tenure as commander of the City Watch, King's Landing experienced a two-year period of safety and prosperity, as he and his men personally doled out justice. The size of his personal army, plus his newfound popularity, made Prince Daemon a more powerful player in the Game of Thrones than he'd ever been before. Though Prince Daemon made enemies throughout his life, one followed him from his brother's ascension to his probable death. Sir Otto Hightower took over his hand of the king when Daemon's father Balon died. He served King Jaehaerys as well as King Viserys in that capacity. Otto and Daemon butted heads early, and it was Otto Hightower who suggested that King Viserys remove Daemon from the small council and stick him in some largely ceremonial post. Putting Daemon in command of the City Watch was your solution! Hightower would have given anything to keep Daemon away from the Iron Throne, so he publicly supported Viserys' daughter Rhaenyra as the rightful heir, though she was a young girl. Again, this put him at odds with Daemon, who believed himself to be a more sensible candidate. Hightower improved his station when King Viserys I chose to marry his daughter, Alicent, after the death of Viserys' first wife. But the ambitious advisor overplayed his hand. Years later, after Alicent had given Viserys sons, Hightower began to incessantly argue for their place in the succession. King Viserys grew tired of this and dismissed him. This riff would soon spill over into civil war, which would pit Daemon and Otto against each other yet again. Daemon's post with the Gold Cloaks meant that he spent less time at court with the nobles and more time with the common folk of King's Landing, who lived far outside the walls of the Red Keep. This won him the affection of citizens throughout the kingdom, who bestowed upon him a new unofficial title, Prince of the City. But since Daemon could so often be found in the city's many establishments of ill repute, he earned himself a second nickname, Lord Fleabottom. His behavior became a point of contention between him and his brother, the king. The prince further upset his brother when he was overheard drunkenly mocking Viserys' newborn son, who had died within a day of his birth. The heir for a day. Did you say it? 
This was a slight too far. King Viserys officially named Rhaenyra Princess of Dragonstone and his heir, essentially cutting his brother out of the line of succession. Of all the titles and superlatives that Daemon Targaryen collected throughout his life, the Rogue Prince was the one that stuck. Being a second-born son of a second-born son, Daemon always knew he was a long shot for the Iron Throne, but that didn't mean he wanted it any less. However, if he couldn't be Prince of Dragonstone and didn't have an immediate path to the crown at King's Landing, he'd take any kingdom he could get. Daemon and his former rival at the Great Council, Corlys Valerian, joined together to conquer the Stepstones, a chain of islands east of Dorne that had been troubled by piracy. The land itself didn't make for much of a kingdom, but the Stepstone's location made them important to lucrative sea trade, which interested Corlys. With Caraxes, Dark Sister, and a mighty fleet, Daemon declared himself King of the Stepstones and the Narrow Sea. Corlys even made him a crown, and King Viserys supported his brother playing at war because it kept him away from King's Landing. Later, he tried to insert himself at Runestone, which had been his first wife's seat of power in the Vale of Arryn. He was not well liked by the people of the Vale, mostly on account of how nasty he had been to his wife. He was not only refused the throne at Runestone, but turned away from the Vale altogether, which left him in an increasingly weakened position. Like most noble men of his day, Daemon used marriage as a political tool. His first wife was chosen for him by his grandmother, who used his betrothal to Lady Rhea Royce to strengthen King's Landing's hold over the Vale of Arryn. On paper, Daemon and Rhea were a solid match. In person, they hated each other and quickly became estranged. He returned to his home city and pleaded with his brother to dissolve their union, but the king refused. When Rhea died in a fall from a horse, Daemon asked Corlys Valerian for his daughter Lena's hand in marriage. Taking Lena as his princess would tie him to the richest and one of the most influential families in the Seven Kingdoms. She was, however, promised to another man, but that was no matter. Daemon handedly slew him in a duel to claim Lena as his wife. The wedding offended King Viserys, who hadn't given the pair his blessing first, as was customary. Viserys saw the marriage for what it was, a chance for Daemon to improve his standing. This was a better match that resulted in twin daughters, but Lena and what would have been Daemon's first son both lost their lives in childbirth. Rhaenyra Targaryen had been favored by the king over his brother, which should have made them enemies. But uncle and niece were always fond of each other. When he traveled, he would bring her back exotic souvenirs. Prior to his second marriage, it was rumored that the two had begun an affair, which caused yet another rift between the rogue prince and the king, who considered having his brother executed. Viserys insisted that his daughter marry Corlys Valerian's son, Laenor. Laenor had been the other claimant to the throne at the Great Council, and Viserys thought it prudent to tie up any loose threats to his family's supremacy. Rhaenyra relented, but was unfulfilled as Laenor was almost certainly gay. Though the couple did have three sons, they were allegedly fathered by her tournament champion, Sir Harwin Strong. For a short time, Daemon and Rhaenyra were wedded to siblings Lena and Laenor Valarian, and the foursome got along well. However, shortly after Lena died in labor, Laenor was killed in a suspicious incident while with a traveling companion. Gossip held that Daemon had paid the assassin so that he could marry a widowed Rhaenyra. There wasn't proof, but the prince and princess did wed. Their union wasn't controversial because of their blood relation or age difference, but because, again, they didn't ask the king's permission, and they didn't mourn for six months before tying the knot. As the largely peaceful reign of King Viserys I drew to its close, the aging monarch realized he had a looming crisis on his hands. He named his eldest daughter Rhaenyra as his heir, but she was a woman with what might be bastard children now married to his scheming little brother. His wife, Alicent Hightower, maneuvered to have her sons, Aegon and Aemon, moved up the line of succession. They were boys legitimately born to the king, but Viserys found the Hightower family's naked ambition distasteful. Two factions emerged, the Greens and the Blacks, so named for the color of the dresses worn by Queen Alicent Hightower and Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen at a party to celebrate the king and queen's fifth anniversary. Being married to the princess and heir apparent put Daemon squarely on the side of the Blacks, along with Corlys Valerian and his wife Rhaenys. The Greens had amongst their ranks Otto Hightower and Sir Criston Cole. Tensions would simmer until the king died and his small council failed to agree upon a successor. When Criston murdered one of Rhaenyra's backers at a council meeting, the war began in earnest. Daemon, who stood to be at least Prince Regent and perhaps even see his sons with Rhaenyra ascend to the throne one day, fought and won important victories for his wife upon his dragon Caraxes. But the war would end in a bloody mess that saw neither Rhaenyra nor Aegon wearing the true crown. The last record of Prince Daemon's existence is the account of the battle above the god's eye, where he and his dragon battled against Aemon and his own dragon. Ultimately, both dragons and their riders plummeted to the lake below, all meeting their deaths, or so the history books say. Aemon's body, along with Dark Sister, was recovered, but Prince Daemon's remains were never found. Rumors that he survived the fight spread, but it's far more likely that the battle above the god's eye was his final act.